Hi YouTube, Unix Soldier here. Um, I'm here to show you basically one of the things I like about Linux. So Linux is Unix based um, at the actual heart of it. Um, Unix uses its own kernel, um, but Linux uses is a kernel. So Linux is its own OS kernel, which is an operating system kernel. A lot of people think Linux is an operating system. It's not. Um, like Unix is. Unix is a full operating system. Linux is just a kernel. Okay, so a lot of people get confused with that because we kind of call operating systems just Linux. An operating system such as Ubuntu or Linux Mint or Debian or Nopix or um, Mandriva, those are versions of Linux. But what they actually are or versions of GNU Linux. So GNU is GNU is not Unix. It's what's called a recursive acronym as said by um, I'm just going to turn this here as said by uh, Richard Stallman. So that's a great thing to, to, to note right there is that a lot of people misinterpret what Linux actually is. Linux it can actually be looked if you look at the actual time that the internet took off you can actually see that it was right around the time that Apache and Linux came out. Um, 1993, I believe, was when the first actual real Linux distro came out called Slackware. And I believe the following same year, Debian came out. Um, and those are two of the longest hardcore distros. I mean, um, Ubuntu, which you may or may not have heard of, and all the other uh, Buntu-like distros, like Kubuntu, uh, Lubuntu, um, Funtu, Zubuntu, they all are Debian-based distros. So is Mint, so is... Anyway, so if you actually look at the time that they all um, that they all came together, it's the actual time that the internet took off. Because suddenly, Linux servers, besides the hardware, hardware they couldn't get around, but suddenly it didn't cost a couple thousand dollars to put a proprietary, which means you can't, it, it belongs to somebody, <laughs> basically. Um, you can't put that on, on every kind of server. That was the big issue with servers back then. Why servers were so expensive was, was not just the hardware, of course, but the software to make the servers run, to put proprietary Unix on there, because Unix used to be proprietary. Um, now the base is wide open, the source base. But the, the thing is, is that I really l thank technology, and I thank Internet, and when I, what I thank, or what I, I give thanks to for the internet and the birth of technology and the birth of all these things that run my life is Linux because Linux and Apache are the foundation of the, the modern internet. They are. I mean, of course, the military started it with proprietary protocols and and uh, software suites and technology stacks. But at the same time, um, it, internet wouldn't be the way it is if everybody couldn't just go out and put their own Linux server out, uh, you know. And, and that's the that's. That's what we got to give thanks to. It's it's really a big mix of that. I just got to plug my laptop here in. So, and you know, most people don't realize. Like right now, I'm pretty sure that they're using Linux servers for for YouTube. They use it for most websites use Linux servers because it's just cheaper. And if you know what you're doing, Linux isn't hard to use. It's easier. Um, so that's a a big thing I like about Linux. It's also pro like proper. It's morally right. Um, I really think that. The sustainable future is Linux. I don't see any future in proprietary software. I, I see that a lot of people are still going to think it's better. I mean, it's a common misconception, a common reality that people seem to think that if I pay for something, it's better. It's this, I call it the Starbucks, the Starbucks uh, <laughs> paradox or whatever you want to call it. The Starbucks, I compare it to people at Starbucks. You go into Starbucks, you see five people with Macs drinking their $5 cup of coffee thinking it's better. I mean, I like Starbucks too. But it's that idea that if you pay more, you get more. I don't agree with that. I think you need to really examine things and have a look at them to see if they're worth it. If they're not, drop it. If it is better, stick with it. I mean, with graphic cards, I go for NVIDIA, 100%. CPUs, nope, I don't go for Intel. I go for AMD because I think it's not worth it. You might have your own opinion on that. Anyway, that's not what I'm here to debate. The point is, is I really think you need to look at things for what they're worth. I mean, people say Linux isn't ready for a desktop. I don't think it's ready for everyone. I wouldn't go suggest Linux to a huge network deployment uh, at, at a huge office or a huge business or a huge, um, you know, enterprise level suite or enterprise level um, deployment. But Linux for me, okay, for techs, if you're still using Windows, 
You know, you're probably new to being a tech, not to be rude, but Linux really is the way to go. I have so much things I can do with my desktop that are different. I can customize. I can. Um, right now, you might notice that my clock's kind of mangled there, as you can kind of see. But uh, <laughs> um, that's just because I need to move that. But, you know, I, I really like having a desktop that is fully featureable. Another thing you can't beat with uh, <laughs> Windows is you've ever opened up multiple tabs in Chrome. I, I got it full with tabs, okay? On my 42 inch monitor here, television rather. I'm going to close it. Look how much faster it opens up in Windows. All these are done. All these are done. All these are done. See? So I think that's a huge difference. I'm also not using um, one of the lighter desktop interfaces. I'm actually using one of the more chunkier ones. Um, I get to have a dock down here like Mac, which I think is really cool. And you're getting a bit of lag, but that's just my video. It's actually very quick. This is on a solid state. Um, I, I, I love Thunderbird more. I just really think that we pay for things that we don't actually necessarily need. And I wish more people understood all that kind of stuff. But they won't. It's just like cooking, right? I mean, not, not everybody wants to go and make their meal from scratch. Not everybody wants to go make their operating system from scratch. They want something that's ready out of the box, ready to go. I get that. But I don't think you guys should hack on Linux users when you don't understand it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Linux. There's everything wrong with Windows. Um, I know a fair bit about Windows. Uh, I'm studying Windows Server right now. Um, I know more components in Windows Server than most techs know in their regular home operating system with Windows. And I can tell you, it's all bug full. I mean, it, it, they are actually Microsoft's actually paid to put things into their code that break down so that us techs make more money. Um, same with the hardware, you know, um, the actual needed hardware to play a lot of these games, like we used to play games in DOS, the reason was is because there's no overhead, or less overhead in DOS when you play a game in an operating system. You know, a lot of people like, like, for instance, Origin and Battlefield 3, they play in the browser. Um, you know, a lot of people like that, it is kind of nice, but if you don't have the hardware for it, that's impossible. It's, a, it's more overhead. So now you got to open, you got to have your operating system running, you got to have your browser running, and the game. Well, I really wish we could run games back in DOS, in DOS emulation, because, and we probably can, there's probably a way to do it, but I wish we could because there'd be less overhead. And my point here is that companies like Microsoft and the game corporations, they pay to make their operating system neat, like the transparency and the arrow effects and the snapping effects. They try to make their operating system need more resources to help out the hardware companies. A lot of people would argue this too, but it's true. The reason that you know you need such hardware to run these latest games is because they get a kickoff from the hardware companies for doing that. There's ways to take games and to run them in environments, to run them you know, with lesser hardware, with less RAM, with less resources than what we need. And it's a big vicious cycle of making consumers think that they need more than they actually do. And, you know, that's why I really liked when Valve actually recently came out and they said they think Windows 8 is going to be a disaster and they want to put all their games in Linux. And keep in mind, I know way more about Windows than Linux, like 10 to 1. Like, I'm a Windows network admin, Linux second, right? But the, the truth of the matter is I hate Windows. It's so buggy. Like, XP was the last operating system that updated in the browser. And that is so insecure by nature, it's ridiculous. Um... There's a million and one reasons. I hate it that there's a silent sleeper account, and I say sleeper account inside Windows. There was a big scandal about that. You can look it up. I don't feel safe using a Windows operating system. Maybe you do. But, you know, um, you know, it's, there's a lot to be said for that kind of stuff. I just, I don't, I don't understand, um, you know, why people have this need to run Windows. It's insecure. You can't always even tell. Even when you're an expert with Windows, you can't always tell that you don't have like a hooked function call running in the background, which is really, really scary, right? Anyway, so that's pretty much it. Um, I really like Linux. What else could I tell you about Linux? Linux, um, you know how there's, there's tons of viruses found every day. Let me actually look up the fact here. I think you'd be surprised. There's only like 48 found viruses for Linux ever, and those include malware, which aren't technically viruses and different things like that. And every kernel update, all those get patched. All those viruses basically become benign. 
So, to me, that's a big difference. Um, so, new viruses. Thirty K pieces. Is it thirty thousand new viruses a day? I think that was right. Yeah, so I have a thing here saying that there's thirty thousand new viruses every day. I thought it was around three thousand anyway. There's a lot every day, and there's only been about forty eight ever found for Linux. Um now, like I said, they get patched. That's a huge difference. So you don't ever have to worry about that. The other thing is, depending on your desktop interface, if you have what's known as a stable version of Linux like Debian, not that I suggest everybody goes and runs Debian because it's really kind of boring and basic, but there's lots of distros that are really feature enriched that are really stable. And if you took one of those distros and put it beside a Windows distro, and you never even used that Windows distro, or let's say you did, either way, you would notice that that Windows distro or Windows version slows down after a while. Not the Linux distro. Another big thing, and it depends on your Linux distro again, is with Windows Server, you're never supposed to. They're never supposed to go down. With servers, they're never supposed to go down. They're never supposed to be restarted, if you can help it. And Windows Server, you have to restart every time. You install something every time you remove something. With Linux, that's not so much. You hardly ever have to restart when you install something or when you you know do an update or anything like that and I think that is huge advantage over you know with Linux over over Windows so anyway that's it let me know what you guys think I'm done subscribe let me know what you think